Although vervets make up the majority of the primates at the Wildlife Centre, there are others here, including baboons, one of the world's largest monkeys. Two-year-old Doodle Bob is a yellow baboon, one of the youngest at the centre. Like so many animals here, he came in as an orphan. Doodle's quite the character in the troupe. He's really playful. He's got lots of friends. He runs around with Fox, his foster brother, all the time. They'll back each other up if there's any fighting or issues. So that's really nice to see. It's a far cry from when Doodle arrived. Shy, scared, and alone. He needed round-the-clock care before he was fostered by adult female Kezi. At the time, Kezi was also fostering Fox, and the two youngsters became firm friends. As soon as the young ones were ready, the team integrated them into this troop. Because in the wild, baboons live in large social groups. Fox is a little bit more of a baby, I'd say. Um, he definitely runs to Kezi more. He'll cry a little bit more than Doodle will. She tends to prefer Fox at the moment. Doodle Bob doesn't seem to mind as much. He's been kind of fostered by Batista, who's an older male. And so he has protection in the troop. But there's about to be a major upheaval for this group of baboons. They're moving house to a much larger enclosure. It's been specially built to give them more space to forage and learn life skills for when they're released back into the wild. There's just one problem. In order to move them, the team need to catch them. We have 20 baboons to move, and they're going from the enclosure that they've been in for a number of years and that they all know and moving to a brand new enclosure. Catching baboons is probably my favorite thing to do, <laughs> but it takes a lot of work. They're smart, they're clever, anything out of their normal routine, and they start to catch on really quickly to what we want to do. Head of animal care, Tori, is taking charge. We're aiming for six baboons today. Uh, basically, we're gonna take whatever six come in first. So we have a little bit of a rough idea of who it's gonna be. This is Doodle Bob. Um, we think it's gonna end up being him and his little gang of teenagers. So we'll see how we go. The unsuspecting youngsters are enticed inside with treats. Hey, buddy, let's go. Good boy. Hi, friend. Come here. Come on, Oscar. Polly, Thunder, Doodle. Doodle Bob, Oscar, Port, Fox and Lobby. Seven teenagers. They did better than they were expecting but they're going to need an adult to supervise the gang. If we can get Batista to come in... I think that'll be... He's that'll friends work. with all of these little guys, um, and then we have a babysitter for them until the rest of the troop turns up. But being an adult, Batista is going to be harder to catch. They need a different approach. So we've set a self-trap for him, so as soon as he wants to pull that banana, he'll trap himself. He's been caught in here enough times that he knows when he takes that banana exactly what's going to happen. It's just a matter of weighing up risk and reward. If he thinks the reward's good enough, he'll go in even though he knows he's going to get stuck. Tori! Yeah? He's in! All right, sweet. The house move is a good chance to carry out routine health checks, which are done every two years. We don't necessarily need to anesthetize them to move them to their new enclosure, but it's a good opportunity because we're catching them. Just a little through this little thing. Right, happy? Yep. With 20 monkeys to examine, the team have set up a makeshift clinic close to the enclosure. Thank you, Mandy. Holy crap, there you go. Vet Charlotte discovers that Batista may have been in a fight. I see, yeah. quite a big wound. Yeah. When they have wounds from other primates, it's usually from the teeth. Baboons uh, have a, a lot of personalities, and with a lot of personalities, you unfortunately get personality clashes. Untreated, this could have become a nasty infection. I'm going to give it a really good clean, and I'm going to give him a shot of antibiotics and anti-inflammatories. 
Now for the youngsters. We've got Doodle Bob separated here, so he's next. But Doodle Bob is not going to make it easy for them. You're OK, Doodle Bob. Good boy. And Eva, the mischief maker, he spotted the olive baboons next door and is goading them. He has to fight with the other guy through the fence? He lives life on the edge. The booster shots will protect the baboons against rabies and tetanus. They're also being tested for tuberculosis. Great. I think he looks fantastic. Don't see any problems. What do you think? Yeah, he looks good to me. When Doodle Bob came in, he came in really young and very needy, and we had people sitting with him around the clock. Then you see him integrated into the troop, and you see he's obviously eating well. It's just so exciting to see. I hand this to you and have you put him in there. Holly, come tell your friend to come out. Doodle Bob, come on. Your friends are here. There you go. Okay. Up, Doodle. Doodle Bob heads straight for foster dad, Batista. So this is why we were so keen on getting Batista through today. Um, these guys need him. Now for the big moment. They're going to be allowed into their new enclosure before the others. You guys ready to go out? Has everyone got their exit, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Doodle is fearless. Oh, Doodle Bob, the brave one. Come, Batista. He's waiting. He's waiting for them all. Batista, you're supposed to be protecting them. You can't protect them if you stay inside. Ah, oh, there we go. Have fun. Be safe. Enjoy your new life. So, eight down, just 12 to go. It's day two of the baboon house move, and now it gets serious. Doodle Bob and his young friends were child's play compared to the older ones that are left. That's enough. One of the adult males is making his feelings known. Wow. Troy isn't happy about being caught. Oh, I hope there's no holes under there. <laughs> we're going to be leaving quickly. Next up are Bobby and Kezzy, alpha male and female of the group. Adult baboons are strong and can be aggressive. The animal care team have to be on their guard. Bobby and Kezzy are the dominant pair from our troop. Very intelligent monkeys who are very switched on. If we make any mistakes this morning, they will notice them a long time before we do. The team need to lure them into the carrying cages so they can be safely anaesthetized. The scariest part of this whole baboon troop move is just getting these two where we need them to be. So we're going to need to leave. Bobby takes the bait. We have to be careful about putting our fingers too near him and stuff like that. And he's got big teeth and strong hands to pull us, so we do have to watch what we're doing around him for sure. Oi, oi, bob, 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 bob. Hey, hey, hey. Please don't do that. They need to immobilize Bobby so that he doesn't get a chance to bite Charlotte when she injects him. Fill this hole. Fill it. The easiest way to do this is to force him to one end of the cage. Bobby is a big baboon, um, and he knows how to throw his weight around. Alza, would you get a temperature for me, please? Tori's worried that Kezi, the alpha female, may be more challenging. She's now obviously seen what's happened to Bobby, which is a little bit inconvenient. It means that she does, she's on to us now. Uh, but hopefully, if the reward is good enough, we'll still get her to come through.
To everyone's surprise, Kezi gives in with no complaints. Kezi's being sedated. She's on her way through. All right, Mama. The thing about the alpha female is that she kind of keeps everybody in line. Batista is good for being that support. He's like the fun Uncle Batista, whereas this is Mom right here who's about to make sure everyone stays in line. Bobby, the troop's alpha male, is already coming round. It's good to see Bobby awake. Um, whenever they sit up, you can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief. And he seems to think he's been given a banana. I wouldn't be surprised if he's uh, having some nice dreams with the, the concoction he's had today. It's been a long day, but two of Doodle Bob's troop are noticeable by their absence. Hey, guys. You gonna sit there all day? You wanna come inside and see your friends again? Hugo and Rika are refusing to go inside. Mandy has drawn the short straw. These guys definitely know the game we're playing and they know the rules very well. I pretend to look at my phone or forage in the grass in hopes that they go in there and get the food and then I shut them in. But Hugo and Rika aren't in any hurry. They can be very patient animals, and my patients will have to outlast their patients. Over at the baboon enclosure, there's more good news for Tori. Hugo has finally caved in. I'm just so happy it's over. So what happened? So I closed one side of the traps, because I yeah. came down to close them, yeah. and I was faffing about with the second one, yeah. and he walked in the first room. <laughs> so I'm looking at him, and I'm like, yeah. all right. That's He's clearly weird. very interested in the food. And then I took one step, and he stayed. And I was like, <laughs> OK, this is good. And he took one step forward, and that's all I needed. And I was like, bam. Um, well done. <laughs> Charlotte decides to dart Hugo rather than risk him causing even more chaos. He's not happy that he's been caught. Hey, bud, don't. No, 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 come on. Hey! Hugo! Hugo! Hey! Hey! Charlotte, how ready are you? Five forty-one. To see him on that board and ready to go back is a massive relief. Right, Mandy, could you get me the stuff in the fridge that says Hugo on it? Let's just get this done as soon as possible. Over the last week, the rest of the troop have been settling into the new enclosure and re-establishing their old hierarchy. And Doodle Bob and Fox have been making the most of their new playground. But now it's time for Hugo to join them. Animal care coordinator Kondwani is being cautious. Hugo's been in, away from the rest of the troop for a while now. Sometimes it's very tricky what, if you put them just back. It might upset the whole troop, so we just want to see first how they welcome him, and then we can put him back. It's looking good. Anytime you change something in a baboon's environment, it could create some tension, but everyone in here seems to be really happy. It's really nice to see them climbing and exploring a new place. So far, we're feeling confident about the way Yuga has been integrated back into the troop. It's going very well. If it continues going this well, then it's a success. And Mandy thinks there could be a bright future ahead for the troop's cheekiest baboon. Doodlebob could be an alpha male one day. Uh, you never know. He certainly seems to have the aptitude for it as a youngster. He's got a good future, I think, ahead of him for sure.
Hey Love Nature fans, be sure to like and subscribe to catch all our wild animal stories. Get closer to nature right here on YouTube.